हरि ओम वेरी गुड सिंगिंग वेरी गुड भजन बोथ ऑफ यू गुड जॉब हरि ओम ओ शंकरम शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम समस्त जनकल्याणे निरत करुणा नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गुर ब्रह्म विवर वसुदेव वसुत देव कंसचाणूमर्दन देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु मूक कौति वाचाल पंगु लंघयते गिरी यम वंदे परमानंदमाधव हरिओम सैल्युटेश नमस्कार टू एवरी वन ऑन दिस ऑस्पिशियस डे ऑफ मकर संक्रांति इट इज अ ट्रेडिशन इन सनातन धर्म दट वेन ब्रह्म विद्या नॉलेज ऑफ द हायर सेल्फ इज रिसीव्ड वी गिव समथिंग बैक as a token of appreciation and especially brahma vidya we call in our tradition this giving back to the teacher as guru dakshina you can see i have my cap and my winter clothes and my ochar robe everything it is generosity of you know people like you so many people actually are eager to offer orange clothes and you know everything i have to tell people please don't give me i have so many clothes and uh, i don't know what to do i cannot just distribute orange clothes to people uh, they will be petrified if they get it so i am very well taken care of bikshas clothes food shelter everything so in our tradition nidaye sarva vidyanam vishaje bhava roginam gurave sarva lokanam dakshina murtaye namaha chitram vatataror mule this dakshina murti bhagwan is beautifully seated underneath the vatataror mule वृद्धा शिष्या गुरुर्युवान शिष्यास्तु छिन्न संशया दक्षिणा मूर्ति भगवान 
sits underneath the banyan tree and he's ever young. He's young because Gnyan makes one immortal. So there's no death. That's why he's called Dakshinamurti. He has faced the southern direction of death and that Yama who dwells over there can never approach Dakshinamurti. So the Guru is young Vruddha Shishya Gurur Yuva. And this Guru with Maunam Gnyan Mudra, he gives us knowledge. So what can these great Rishis give to Dakshina Murti Bhagavan as Guru Dakshina? He's, he requires nothing. We heard the song, he's a Chidambaresha, Nataraja. You know, he dances in the space and Chideva Ambaram. His clothes are the Dishas, all the directions. He requires nothing. Yet, just for the gesture of Gnyan Mudra, the Rishis ever bow down and they say, we will surrender our life in the service of Vedas. This is the Dakshana that Rishis give to Daksh Dakshana Murti for acquiring this knowledge. Uh, and Sapta Rishis in every Kalpa, they are ever present because they vowed that as Dakshana, we will be present to make sure that Veda Adhyanan goes on and the teaching of the Vedas go on. So this day and age, what is the Vatavruksha? The camera in front of me. This blue screen behind me. I have, if you come over here and this is like a studio, those people who have seen. I have these spotlights. I feel like you know, uh, an anchor person in NBC Evening News getting ready because there's nobody over here and these lights and camera and the Zoom. And I, I was just uh, reflecting upon when this COVID started. I said, from where Dakshina Murti Bhagwan and where have we come? I have a laptop and high speed communication and these spotlights and thank God there is no makeup artist over here. For Basma and Kumkum, Kum, what makeup artist? So thank God that person is not here. But this, this is the Upadhi of Chinma mission now. So to maintain our satsangs go on. Right now there are 77 people. So I can see how you know who is there, how many are there. And uh, last few days, you know, 100 and so, so many people from all around, even different countries, people are dialing in. So uh, whatever Guru Dakshina you want to offer, it is only for the yoga and shame of this mission. That's all. The mission requires this entire setup for the prachar to go on this mission itself is the banyan tree and you see all different acharyas in so many different languages they were speaking on bhagavad gita and i was just so humble that puja gurudev's work one man who left kerala and went to uttarkashi and met another great guru from kerala tapanji maharaj his aradhana day is day after tomorrow 16 and look how many sparks they have created and it will go on. So it is support of people like you who continue to uh, see value and worth in Chinmaya Mission. Uh, the link will be sent over there. You can see in the chat, the link is all, all already there. Whatever you want to offer as Guru Dakshina, you can offer uh, the, the mission who's hosting these talks is our Chinmaya Mission Pittsburgh. They don't have a resident monk over there. Uh, 
and whatever is given will be used for our mission activities. I thank you all for your support. Hari Om. Blessings of Gurudev and great Mahatmas, Bhagavan Krishna, may we always be in the Chhatra Chaya of these great Mahatmas and Gurus and Bhagavan. Annavan Annado Bhavati Mahan Bhavati Prajaya Pashubi Brahmavachasena Mahan Kirtya Swastirastu. We are seeing the 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Yesterday, I left off discussing Shlokas 6, 7, and 8. Bhagavan says, Yetu Sarvani Karmani Mai Sanyasya Matparaha Ananye Naiva Yogena Maam Dhyayanta Upasate Tesham Aham Samudharta Mrutyu Samsara Sagarat Havami Nachirat Partha Maya uh, Veshita Chetasam, those people who bring their mind to me, Arjuna, I am ever available to these people. Uh, Achir, uh, Bhagavan says, Bhavami Nachirat Partha. So, in no time I arrive over there, but what is the qualification? Ye to Sarvani Karmani, those people who offer all actions, Mai Sanyasya. Offering everything to me and offering it to me, mat paraha, mat eva param. So, this thinking about this Bhagavan and looking at this entire world as Jagataishadi, Yukta Sevanam, looking at this whole world as Bhagavan, mat paraha, mat eva param that I alone am the highest that way. Ananye naiva yogena. This takes a while for every single thought to dawn in our mind. With Bhagavan in mind, it requires colossal effort, but it can be achieved, it can be done. So uh, I had talked about this in the interest of time, we have to move on. That eight, mayeva mana adatsva, may buddhim niveshaya, nivashishya si mayeva, ataurdvam na samshaya. So, Bhagavan, what he is saying, mayeva mana adatsva, may buddhim niveshaya. So, what Bhagavan is trying to tell us is instead of being world dependent, people dependent, situation dependent people, we should become God dependent people. We should depend upon Bhagavan. This should be our buddhi. That is called mai eva mana adatsva. Usually the mind goes in search for support, emotional support, Feelings, emotional, psychological, mental, all this, the mind, the mind has a tendency to belong. It yearns to belong to someone. And thus, we seek out relationships. And even when relationships go sour, uh, we don't give up on relationships. We end one to start another one. Because this is the nature of the mind. So instead of becoming dependent on the objective reality, Bhagavan is saying that Mayeva Mana Adatsva, lead the mind to me. Why are you depending upon the world of objects? Why are you depending upon other people? Trust people, but depend upon me. That's what Bhagavan is saying. We should not lose our trust and hope in humanity. But we should be absolutely dependent upon Paramatma for all our well-being. 
for he alone is the upholder of this entire world so mai eva manadatsva lead this mind to bhagavan mai buddhim niveshaya this take this intellect to me and the intellect looks for cause why did this happen why me why is it that these people are doing better than me the buddhi is continuously asking why 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 like a a fourth uh, a four year old a five year old kindergartner why why a teacher also runs out of all the answers why 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 is water like this are the teacher is like why is water is like this but you know it's the inquisitiveness of the little kindergartner uh, they are learning about the world for the first time and it is a genuine question but there's no answer for uh, the kindergarten teacher she doesn't have an answer for it just because god made it like this that's all the teacher can say so where is the god oh god is in the temple oh i went to the temple i never saw god how did you see god oh you didn't do darshan i did darshan but i didn't see god so that cause hunting is the preoccupation of this buddhi so we have to take the buddhi i heard something very beautiful gurudev had asked a question about some uh, maya and jagat to tapovan ji maharaj and tapovan ji maharaj gave a stern look to chinmayananda and said have you come over here to learn about maya or brahman ask questions about brahman and maya you learn to accept but we do the opposite we never question brahman uh, we only question about maya there are no answers about maya uh, that's why she is called maya ya ma sa maya that which is not she agatita gatana pati asi maya she makes the impossible possible so if we try to question and try to understand maya we will never understand maya so mai buddhi niveshaya buddhi has to be led to ishvara tatva brahma tatva ishvar sh uh, buddhi should not be led to the prapancha buddhi should not be led to the five fold manifested uh, world of plurality buddhi should be led to paramatma such is an intelligent person the true intelligence is to make the buddhi sukshma subtle the tikshna buddhi comes from all different types of practices but sukshma buddhi rises when we learn to internally contemplate on the higher and we lead this buddhi towards bhagwan and endowed with shraddha which time and again when we embark upon it it itself turns into bhakti devotion and that itself turns into the object of contemplation meditation thus the answer given in kaivalya upanishad is shraddha bhakti dhyana yoga davaihi may you come to realize this brahman by the method of shraddha bhakti and dhyan yoga that dhyan yoga is what bhagwan is referring to over here mai buddhi niveshaya it will take time slowly but this is where we have to lead our intellect to nivasishyasi mai eva uh, may you come to upon leading the buddhi over there dwell in it not that you think about it and then you come back come back out and start dealing with the world of prapanch no lead the buddhi over there and dwell in it nivasishyasi 
mai eva you find your dwelling place in bhagwan that's why we teach children you know khate bhi ram kaho chalte bhi ram kaho you know all this while eating you chant his name all these continuously pashyan shrunvan sprushan jigran ashnan gachan swapan swashan pralapan unmishan nimishan aha ha ha all these fifth chapter bhagwan talks about every moment we can every moment we can lead ourselves to paramatma this inner dwelling in paramatma nivashishyasi mayeva ata urdvam na samshaya here on there is no doubt that i will come so we saw uh, bhagwan said the fifth step about absolute knowledge difficult but we have to tread it and if that cannot be done then look at this whole world as paramatma and lead your mind into this entire world which is the appearance of bhagwan itself it is a pratima of bhagwan it is the very form of bhagwan so now bhagwan is saying if you cannot do that then so different levels bhagwan is leading us to this bhakti so from na, shlokas this 9 to 11 bhagwan is leading us to different steps methods to help us fix our mind in parmatma in devotion in bhakti continuing अथ चित्तम सामधातु न शक्नोषि मयि स्थिरम अभ्यास योगे न ततः मामिच्छातुं धनंजय सो भगवान इज सेइंग अथ चित्तम सामधातु मयि स्थिरम न शक्नोषि in case arjuna if you cannot chittam this mind mai now mai over here what as in the previous shloka 6 7 and 8 what bhagwan had talked about is the step 4 of upasana of this entire universe being the form of bhagwan अनेक रूप ईश्वर ध्यानम दैट कंटिन्यूस ध्यान मेडिटेशन थॉट प्रोसेस इन वोकिंग भगवान इन ऑल नेम्स एंड इन ऑल फॉर्म्स इफ दैट इज डिफिकल्ट इफ मई विश्व रूपे स्थिर भक्ति चित्तम samadhatum na shaknosi in case if you are not able to fix your mind arjuna in me as this very universal form then tatah then abhyasa yogena bhagavan dhananjaya he dhananjaya arjuna you practice abhyasa yogena tatah mam ichhaptum dhananjaya mam ichhaptum the desire to reach me you can fulfill that by abhyasa yoga so what is abhyasa yoga over here so now bhagwan said the fifth this gnyan one difficult then the fourth one the fourth one meditate upon everything as bhagwan if that is difficult then bhagwan says the third one the third one was ishta devata upasana that is called abhyas yoga what is ishta deva upasana do a small puja 
of your own personal god it may be a little shaligram you offer little water little milk you do some abhishekam with purusha suktam narayan suktam if you don't know purusha suktam narayan suktam no problem namo bhagavate vasudevaya you can chant bhagwan's name and do that and after that you can offer chandan kumkum akshata chant different names of bhagwan and if one of these names speak to you after doing the archana and deepam and uh, the agarbatti deepam naivedyam quietly sit and think about the narayana who has appeared in front of a little shaligram and think about the glory of narayana the chaturbhuj narayana who sits shantakaram bhujagashayanam he sits in the coiled bed of serpent what is this serpent the serpent is none other than time it is a time factor and he finds his abode in it bhujagashayanam padmanabham and from the navel rises this lotus which houses none other then brahma ji who is brahma ji he is the shrushti karta he is the creator so the time is what he sleeps in he provides the time and he provides the space the space is brahma ji the time is the sheshanath and the time and space creates ananta koti brahma and this narayan bhagwan and all wealth of the universe is surrendered to the feet of narayan bhagwan symbolically lakshmi ji seated over there and they are seated on this sheshanag suspended in the ocean of milk the ocean of milk is a symbolic representation of if we see the picture of galaxies from far away it looks like white twirling a uh, giant mass that's what he is seated on time and space spins continuously and bhagwan is seated over there the light emanated creates a halo of white milky ocean and that is narayan bhagwan the whole universe is nothing but that so meditate upon that that is called over here abhyas yoga abhyas is leading the mind to a name and form aakar of one bhagwan ek devata dhyanam verses in shloka 6 7 8 anek roop dhyanam in all that you see arjuna take your mind to me in all that you see take your buddhi to me if that is not possible then just do abhyas yoga abhyas yoga is you don't have to do it 24 7 in all places but take out some time and in that time you spend with me either shaligram upasana you do shivalinga upasana you do you can do devi upasana so many things you can do bhagwan is saying but abhyas yogena yadi maam ichhaptum in case if you want to come to me if the desire is there to reach me o dhananjay you are going to have to do this that is why bhagwan is saying atha chittam samadhatum na shaknosi if this mind is not available 
to meditate upon me in all the time, all aspects of your life, then you do, you practice Abhyas Yoga. And this Abhyas Yoga is the Ishta Devata Upasana. Because there are a lot of Vasanas. And if the mind, intellect complex is bombarded by the pressure of Vasanas, then uh, the mind cannot meditate upon Bhagavan. So, Ishta Devata Upasana is, O oh Lord, let me sit down, do some Upasana, and then when I come out of my worship, the, I can tend to the desires which I am treading on the path of dharma. Dharma, artha, kama. The chaturvida purusharthas are for the sake of the fourth one called moksha. So, dharma is for moksha. And artha, what we acquire, should be used towards dharma. And kamana should be given up so that slowly, slowly, slowly when desires, kamana is given up, the pressure of kamana when it goes, the mind is easily able to take to abhyas yoga. So dharma, artha, kama, moksha, these chaturvida purusharthas, when they are aligned properly, Bhagavan said, you will be able to reach me. Continuing, abhyase pyasamarthosi mat karma paramo bhava madartham api karmani Kurvan Siddhima Vapsyasi. So now Bhagavan is saying, Yadi in case Abhyasa Yoga Api. So Ishta Devata Upasna of the previous shloka, chapter, uh, shloka 9. So in case if Abhyase Api Asamartha Asi. In case if you are not capable of doing the Ishta Devata Upasana, Ishta Devata Dhyanam. Then over here, Bhagavan is saying, Tarhi Mat Karma Paramam Paramo Bhava. Then Bhagavan is saying, if you are unable to practice this Abhyas Yoga, then Mat Karma Paramo Bhava. Offer all your karmas to me. Because the pressure of vasanas is so much that the mind, intellect, equipment is continuously driving the physical body for karma, action, action. Thus Bhagavan is saying, mat karma paramo bhava. Learn to offer all the actions to me then. Before you embark upon the journey of doing actions, engaging in actions, invoke me. Om Shri Ganesha Yanamaha. Om Shri Saraswati Yanamaha. Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha. Oh Lord Ganesha, please be nirvigna mastu. Please remove all the obstacles. Oh Mother Saraswati, inspire proper thought process so that action can be carried on properly. And hey, Guru, guide me so that I don't lose myself in this world of Bhagavan calls it over here, Mrutyu Samsara Sagara. In this vast ocean of death.
may I not get lost in it? So remembering Bhagavan, we embark upon all our endeavors. It may be going to a grocery store to pick up milk. But the minute the ignition is hit in the car, that Vinayaka, which is there on the dashboard, I look at him, I seek his permission, please allow me to successfully reach the grocery store. I, they, these upasanas allow us to connect with this world. I may be going for work. Let me reach work safely. And we bow down to Ganesh Ji. So many things we can do to remind ourselves to do Mat Karma Paramo. How do we nobleize our actions? So this is over here, Bhagavan is saying the second step if the third is not possible, then Bhagavan is saying, then the second step, and the second step is learn to offer all actions to me. Nishkama karma. There is a lot of, lot of vasanas are there pushing upon the equipment. So over here, madarthamapi karmani Kurvan Siddhi Mavapsisi and Arjuna, if you do this, Madarthamapi, for my sake, you do all actions. Because sitting down and meditating, you cannot do. Higher than that, remembering me as the glory of this whole universe, continuous meditation upon me, fourth step you cannot do. Third step you cannot do. So you have to be active because the, the mind and the intellect, they have not yet taken on to the flight of meditation. So the rajoguna has to be exhausted. Bhagavan says then engage in action. But engage in action for my sake. Madarthamapi karmani kurvan siddhima vapsasi. So when you do it, Kurvan, by doing this, Siddhima Vapsyasi, you will get Moksha Siddhi. Now, please don't think immediately, just by doing this, you will get Moksha. What is meant is when you do Nishkama Karma in the second step, your mind and intellect will become pure. And the purity of the mind and the intellect is the mind will become quiet and intellect will become resolved. And the quieter the mind, the greater will be our ability to do upasana. What is upasana? Meditation on Bhagavan. Invoking Bhagavan in our mind. We can invoke Bhagavan in a little turmeric mound, in a shivalinga, in a little shaligram, in a Sri Chakra, so many places. But to actually invoke Bhagavan in the mind and keep him over there all times, that is the highest upasana is to dwell in Ishwara consciousness. Oh Lord, continuously remembering. Why? So that we don't create new vasanas. We remain far away from it. The mind has become quiet. Vasanas have been exhausted up to an extent by doing karma yoga. And the phala of karma yoga is vasana decreases up to an extent. Mind becomes quiet up to an extent. And to that extent, a person can meditate and take advantage of small little worship. I'm seeing all these children sing before our classes every day. And behind them, you will see little, little altars in everybody's home, which is so beautiful to see. 
but to see that altar every day to sit down light a lamp a little agarbatti offer some naivedyam and quietly invoking that lord in the mind and keeping keeping him or her over there is the actual upasana we should everybody should have the sannidhi in the home but the sannidhi has to be practiced to create a sannidhi inside outside sannidhi is to create a sannid temple the outside temple is to invoke the inner sanctum sanctorum where he lives and we have to invoke him over there so bhagwan says if you cannot this karma yoga fruit will be your mind will become quiet so you will meditate upon me on the inside and the more you meditate then you will be able to look at this world an effortless meditation going on about me and after that when you get to upanishad class the minute you hear the upanishadic mantras na tatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam naima vidyato bhanti kutah ayam agnihi tam eva bhantam anubhati sarvam tasya bhasa sarvam idam vibhati the very words itself create a clear understanding of what the light of awareness is it is not an actual light present in the sun the moon the stars the lightning and the dia but it is the light because of which all five of this are there and that light because it shines everything shines including the buddhi which has invoked you o oh lord and that light in me and livens this entire equipment because of which i know and the mind becomes silent in the invocation of that light there is nothing else remaining to reach over there bhagwan is saying that is the siddhi but that siddhi will only come with knowledge and we all have to walk this path each one of us regardless of which religion whichever religion one practices doesn't matter not just in hinduism anything idea is mind has to be controlled captured and conquered conquering of the mind is the silencing of the mind doesn't matter islam christianity judaism buddhism whatever we must come to capture and apprehend this mind this is the only equipment with which we will be able to see infinity we have no other equipment so this equipment we have to prepare and this is the second step of preparation is what bhagwan is saying upon this bhagwan says siddhi is available now bhagwan is saying the next next shloka athai dadapya shakto si कर्तुमश्रिताकर्म फल त्याग तत कुम भगवान से अथ एक अशक्त असी इवन इफ दिस यू आर नॉट केपेबल ऑफ डूइंग स्टेप टू कर्त कर्तुम मद योगमाश्रिता इफ यू आर नॉट केपेबल ऑफ डूइंग 
this karma yoga of offering all actions to me then bhagwan is saying sarva karma phalatyag at least bhagwan is saying give up all a sarva karma phalatyagam renunciation of all fruits of action Tatakuruyatatmavan. Bhagavan saying that you become self-controlled and give up all fruits of action. Actually, this is a tall order to give up fruits of all actions because everybody. is running around in this world to acquire something to attain something to achieve something and because of the desires people are pushed into action now one hand there is a desire that pushes one into action but the push is there because there is a need there is a want there is a desire to acquire and upon acquiring to relinquish that it is difficult if we give that up then we would have even given up the desire so actually the way i understand this is give up worries give up worries do action let desires poke let desires poke us let desires take us into the path of karma but let there be no worries and anxieties our worry and anxiety to acquire objects situations people things power position it destroys us forget about reaching bhagwan we will be driven flat by the world of objects the beating we get is for just treading this path of desires what to do difficult to give up desires bhagwan krishna himself has said nobody can remain a moment without doing any action na kashchi kshanam api jatu tishtati ya karma krut karyate yavashak karma sarva prakriti jai gunai hi this the gunas of prakriti are going to push us to do action bhagwan says approach action intelligently give up worries and become self control we use uh words unnecessarily we use words unnecessarily we speak unnecessarily we use excessive words in emails in our text messages in our communication and this becomes a cause of our destruction yogasya prathama dwara vang nirodh aparigraha Shankaracharya ji has said in Vivek Chudamani, the first step into the life of yoga hood is Vang Nirod Aparigraha. Give up the excessive use of speech and Aparigraha. This a bill, this uh, desire to grab and to hold on to things. Start giving that up. this 
is the first step of bhakti is what bhagwan is saying become yatatmavan become a person of self control look at the speech look at all the intakes the movies which are watched the music which is heard the food which is taken in the places that we go for vacationing the people who we hang around with that all fits into yata atmavan see who is contributing to your hindrance what is not allowing you to progress on this path of yoga arjuna you examine become yatatmavan see where you are leaking your energies in the winter months we try to find you know energy efficient homes by sealing the windows and the door cracks and uh you know so many things that we do to make the home energy efficient what are we doing to make our body yoga efficient how do we find efficiency in yoga well we have to figure out where are our energies being drained talking too much on the phone texting social media there's a whole documentary on netflix as to how social media is ruining the very fabric of this nation now whatsapp is on its way out something else is going to come don't worry about it don't worry that whatsapp is going this is unending there are thousand ways in which we disseminate our our energy gets dissipated and then we don't have enough strength for our uh, abidance in bhagwan thus bhagwan look all five steps how beautifully he has covered in 11 shlokas so this abhyas we have to practice ishta deva upasana and now yatatmavan we have to figure out where we are leaking these energies and get them back at the level of the body there are senses pancha karmendriyani pancha gnyanendriyani five organs of actions uh, walking and running and doing this and doing that and helping this person helping that person uh okay help 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 do all that do karma yoga exhaust all the rajoguna but now come to conserve sattva but if our sattva is exhausted what are we going to do then so at the level of the body the vitality of the senses loots away our spiritual vigor the energy of the mind its inability to remain quiet continuously nowadays when you give children time out they are happy because they have time out with this gadget the whole world is right there there is no time out what time out the whole world out is here so a uh, unique creatures we have become we can sit in front of a computer and google and uh, netflix all day long dissipation of energy what else mind is kept stimulated oh i don't like this video the billions of them are there on youtube another one research shows that average attention span if a video is more than Two minutes, some fifty-four seconds. It is considered to be too long. That is how 
फिकल वी हैव बिकम एट द लेवल ऑफ माइंड सो भगवान से रीडिंग वॉट रीडिंग रीडिंग राइटिंग कंप्लीटली गॉन सो वेरी यूनिक वर्ल्ड वी आर लिविंग इन दिस कोविड हैज ब्रॉट अस टू क्वेश्चन अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स दैट वी डू इन अ वे वी आर पुट इन अ जेल सेल and we have to figure out jail cell of our own home so if we use this time to get a grip on ourselves traveling gone meeting people gone this that then what are we going to do how can we raise this equipment fantastic time so this is the beauty of this continuing shreyo hi gnanam abhyasa gnana dhyanam vishishyate dhyana karma phal tyagah tyaga shantir anantaram bhagwan is saying that श्रेयो ही ज्ञान अभ्यास सो श्रेयो ही ज्ञान अभ्यास सो ज्ञान इज सुपीरियर टू अभ्यास ऑफकोर्स अभ्यास इज यू नो दैक्टिस द प्रैक्टिस एंड नॉलेज is once you have acquired knowledge it is just abidance living in this knowledge so shreyo hi gnanam abhyasat and gnanat dhyanam vishishyate so a uh, greater than abhyas is the knowledge and the knowledge that this whole world is paramatma and then gnanat dhyanam vishishyate ha huh. so when we say gnanat dhyanam vishishyate greater than knowledge is dhyanam now one may say how is this possible but what is talked about over here is ज्ञान पूर्वक ध्यान नॉलेज मेडिटेशन सप्लीमेंटेड विथ नॉलेज सो इट इज ए नॉलेज बेस्ड मेडिटेशन अचिंत्यम अव्यक्तम अनंत रूपम शिवम प्रशांतम अमृतम भूत योनी तथा कैवल्य उपनिषद अचिंत्यमंतरूपम दीज वर्ड्स लाइक हाउ आई वॉज वर्किंग दम आउट एट द लेवल ऑफ द बॉडी एट द लेवल ऑफ द माइंड एट द लेवल ऑफ द इंटेलैक्ट conquering all those senses silencing them and entering tathadi madhyant vihinam ekam vibhum chidanand roopam this all pervading that i am so greater than that is gnana purvak dhyanam and dhyanat karma phal tyagah Bhagwan is over here saying, uh, "This gnana va dhyanat karma phalat tyagah to renounce actions, the fruits of the actions. Karma phalat tyagah. Bhagwan is saying, 'Tyagat shanti ranantaram, the shanti that we get.'" from renouncing the fruits of action and to 
see the joy in somebody's face it brings contentment and that contentment will give you a glimpse of shanti so bhagwan is inspiring us to do karma yog and the glimpses of peace joy and happiness that we see from karma yog will allow us to relinquish more and more karma phala give up more and more fruits of action thus we will become more and more fulfilled that fulfillment will create a quietude of mind which will be filled with god meditation and later on god meditation with knowledge so he gave a full sadhana over here that instead of just mechanically doing it instead of just mechanically doing dhyanam proper karma yoga if it is done and if the fruits of action are given up you will tyagad shantirananantaram you will acquire peace joy happiness is it not that in uh, christmas time in united states at least in the north american continent before you go into these shopping malls and the department stores somebody is standing outside with a bell and salvation army person is waiting over there and they're singing this the season to be merry this is a season for joy this is a season for happiness why by giving you become happy your go irony is you're going to the store to buy for yourself but outside somebody is asking that share something with someone so what is bought from the department store will be even more sweeter because this the season to be happy to be joy to be merry to be giving and where whenever we give there is a greater joy in giving than receiving that is what bhagwan is saying receive we all want to who doesn't want to receive everybody wants to receive but when a giver decides to give and the receiver on the other hand is an appropriate recipient he is humbled and the giver basks in joy this itself bhagwan says are the seeds sown for bhakti this is how bhakti grows now the last portion of uh, this chapter is just nothing but who is this bhakta just beautiful portion of gita so actual bhakti is done the explanation of bhakti now who is this bhakta that we will see tomorrow सर्वे 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 सन्तु भद्राणि भद्राणि ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि ओम जय श्री कृष्ण जय श्री कृष्ण हरि ओम स्वामी जी ओम स्वामी जी थैंक यू स्वामी ओम प्रणाम नमस्कार हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि ओम